to begin with, it would be advisable to review uh, the work of Isaiah 29 verse 12 and compare this to the subject material in Genesis 17 verse 20 to uh, review the rabbinic uh, work by the great uh, medieval scholar Rashi and his uh, interpretation through the Genesis Rabbah and other uh, scholars of his day, no doubt what he has to say regarding the sons of Ishmael, the sons who were through the great prophet Abraham, people of promise. And if you study the Hebrew, you will see that the word for leaders can also be the word for cloud or some form of cloud or mist uh, in the air. And this will be reflected in the readings for the biblical sources herein. We're also looking at the Islamic sources in Sahih Bukhari. And I'm about to commence the reading. It will be interspersed with a section from Proverbs, which is relevant to the rabbinic interpretation. And I will give a rendering of it which is in the poetic form, not just a transliteration, which is something I would usually do and I mainly do in this work on Abraham, but uh, a more poetic rendering is appropriate in context. The use of Hebrew is sometimes quite sparse. Without further ado, Abraham and his people travelled east and south. Abraham walked through cultivated land, desert and mountains until he reached the desert of Arabia. And Sarah saw Hagar with the son whom she had brought forth unto Abraham in violation. And she said to Abraham, Remove this female slave and her son. And that thing was maddeningly harsh in the eyes of Abraham on account of the cause of his son. And God said to Abraham, May it not be harsh in your eyes on account of the boy and because of your female slave. All that Sarah has said to you, hear and obey her voice, for in another will seed unto thee be proclaimed. And the son of this female slave I will appoint as a great nation, for he is your seed. And Abraham said to God, I wish that Ishmael shall live before thee. And God said, In truth Sarah your woman shall bring forth a son to you, and you shall call his name Yitzhak. And I will cause my covenant to arise with him unto a time indefinite covenant, moreover to his seed hereafter. So as to Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I bless him, and make him fruitful, and will greatly, greatly increase him. He shall bring forth twelve imams, or twelve leaders, and I will make him a great nation. As would have been the touch of snow and the heat of harvest, such is an emissary faithful to his sender. He who refreshes his Lord's soul, they are clouds and wind, but of a spirit of promise no rain falls to reach land. Such it is for a boasting man by lying in a falsified gift. The story of Abraham continues. I will also cause my covenant to arise with Yitzhak, whom Sarah shall bring forth to thee unto an appointed time in this following year. And... Arising early at the break of day, Abraham took up bread and a water container. And they came to an uncultivated valley, having no fruit, no trees, no food, nor water. The valley had no hint of life. After Abraham had helped his woman and child to dismount, he left them with a small amount of food, being barely sufficient for two days, and water. Then giving it to Hagar, placing it on her shoulder, the child also so casting her away under a tree. When he had reached Marker, also known as Barker, he made her sit and headed back in the direction they had come from a place near the ancient site of the Kaaba, on the site of Zamzam, the highest point of the holy site. Ishmael's mother followed him, asking, Where are you going, Abraham, leaving us in this valley, where there is no person whose company we may enjoy, nor is there anything? She repeated that to him many times. But he did not look back at her. Abraham maintained his silence and continued to distance himself from her as she repeated her actions to no avail. Finally, she concluded he was not acting on his own volition. And when they reached Carter, she called to him from behind, O oh Abraham, to whom are you leaving us? He called out to God. Then she asked him, Did God command you to do this? He answered, Yes. 
She said, I am satisfied to be with God. She called again, then we are not to be lost. May God be with us. And she returned to her place and started drinking water from the water skin and her milk increased for her child. At the same time, Abraham walked on until he reached the Thania, a crack in the rock, where he was no longer visible to them. He proceeded to face the Kaaba and raised both hands to invoke God, making the following supplication. Aradon, indeed I have settled some from amongst my seed in a valley, absent of cultivation, near your sacred house. Aradon, that they may establish the formalized prayers, so make the hearts of men incline unto them, and provide them with the fruits that they may be grateful. Aradon, indeed you know what we conceal and what we pronounce openly. Not a single thing remains hidden from God in the earth, nor in the sky above. When Abraham said, Adonai, make this city a refuge, and keep me and my sons aside from worshipping the idols. Adonai, they have certainly led astray many from amongst humanity. So whoever follows me, then indeed he is of me. And whoever disobeys me, then indeed you are oft forgiving, most merciful. All the homage for God, the one who has granted me Ishmael and Yitzhak in old age. Indeed, Adonai, is all hearer of the supplication. Adonai, make me an initiator of the formal prayer, and from my seed. Moreover, Aradon, accept my supplication. Aradon, forgive me and my parents and the believers the day the account will be established. Hagar suckled her child and continued to drink from the water. In those days there was no one else living in market, nor was there any water. So the water in the container came to an end. Then she became dehydrated with the thirsty child, and she cast aside the boy beneath one of the shrubs to shield him. And she watched her child writhe until she could look no more. She left him. Then she walked and sat to be away from him at a distance of a bow shot, for she said, Let me not see the death of my boy. So she sat away from him and lifted her voice and lamented, and she walked and wandered about in the arid wilderness where there was to be a spring on seven. With the water all used up, she said, I had better go and look, that I may yet see somebody. And she found Asafa, being the nearest mountain to her in that place. She ascended the Safa mountain. She stood there on its summit and started scanning the valley diligently, hoping that she might see someone, but could not see a soul. Then she descended from Asafa, and on reaching the valley, hitched up her garment, saying again, If I go there and look, I may find somebody. And on coming down, she ran in the valley, as a person in distress and jeopardy, until she crossed the valley and reached Al Mola mountain, where she stood and started looking, expecting to see someone. Yet having looked for a long while, she could not detect anybody. She went and ascended the Safar mountain. She ran to and fro many times. Thus Hagar completed seven rounds, repeating this action between as -Safa and al -Mawa when she reached al -Mawa. She spoke to herself, Surely I have to go back and determine the state of the child. Yet God heard the boy's call, and a divine angel called to Hagar from the heavens. Suddenly she heard a voice, and commenced to listen attentively. Hearing the voice again, she said, O oh, you, who has made me hearken to thee, have you something unto my aid? And she said to that peculiar voice, Help us if you can offer any aid. The angel said to her, What gives to you, O Hagar? Fear not of neglect, for this is the house of God which will be built by this boy and his father, and God never neglects his people, for God has heard the call of the boy in the place where he is. And he said to her, Arise, raise up the boy, and be steadfast. Put your hand in his, for I will found a great nation. So she walked. Then God opened her eyes, and behold, she saw Gabriel at the place of Zamzam, an angel striking the ground with his limb, and then water gushed out from that place, and she saw a spring of water. Ishmael's mother was astounded and started digging. She started to form something like a basin around using her hand, and she started filling her container with water by cupping her hand, and the water was flowing out 
even after she had scooped some. The Prophet Muhammad added to say, May Allah bestow mercy on Ishmael's mother. Had she not hastened upon the Zamzam, it would have been a stream flowing on the face of the land. Ishmael's mother then started drinking from the water. Her milk increased and she suckled her child and she refreshed the boy. At that time the house of God was on a modest hill and when torrents came down, the water flowed left and right. Hagar lived there in isolation until the time when some people from the tribe of Urim, even a family, passed by her in Ishmael as they came the way of Kana in the lower part of Makkah. Passing through the bottom of the valley, they saw a bird or birds with a habit of flying around water and not leaving it. So they said, the type of bird can only be found at a place where there is water. This bird must be flying around water, although we know there is no water to be had in this valley. That astonished them. So they sent one or two scouts who searched the place and can discerned the source and returned to inform them of the water. So they all came to her. Ishmael's mother sat by the water. And they asked her, O Hagar, would you permit us to stay with you? She answered, Yes, but with no right to the water. They agreed to that, and Hagar was pleased with the affair, for she was accustomed to revel in the company of others. So they settled there, and later on called their families, who came and settled with them. Hence some families became permanent residents there. So God was with the boy, and he grew greatly, and dwelt in the arid wilderness, and came to be a fine archer. The child grew up and learned Arabic from them, and caused them to love and admire him as he matured, and he dwelt in the arid wilderness of Midian. Later on, when her boy had grown greatly, they also arranged a marriage to a woman from amongst them, and his mother received a woman unto him from the pagan land. Yehovah attended Sarah as he had said, and Yehovah acted for Sarah just as his word decreed, so Sarah conceived and brought forth a son to Abraham for his old age, unto the appointed time which God's angel had spoken to him. And Abraham called his son's name, the one brought forth to him, that Sarah brought forth to him, Yitzhak. And Abraham circumcised his son Yitzhak as a son of eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a son of one hundred years when his son Yitzhak was brought forth to him. And Sarah said, God has dealt laughter unto me. Every one who hearkens will laugh with me. And Abraham made a great feast on the day his son Yitzhak was weaned. And she said, Who would have made utterance to centenarian Abraham? Sarah shall nurture children, for I have brought forth a son for his old age. Then he was weaned, and the child grew greatly. All of this came to be, because the son of the female slave, this very one, is not to inherit with my son, with Yitzhak, according to what Sarah had ordered. God bless your studies. In the name of God, Amen.